We often live busy and frantic lives, pursuing financial security, pursuing the next step in our career, pursuing a relationship, pursuing pleasures and distraction, always pursuing more. But what if there is only one pursuit that really matters? Only one pursuit that can truly offer us what we are looking for. The pursuit of the one thing that could ever actually satisfy us. What if the answer is in the pursuit of Jesus Christ? Join us at St. Anne's these next five weeks as we see how the pursuit of Jesus is the heart of discipleship. Our friendship with Christ is the treasure buried in the field, the pearl of great price, the one thing necessary which is worth giving up everything to pursue. We will explore how we can journey along this pathway to discipleship, step by step, from the very beginnings of conversion to the mature friendship of a disciple. And as we pursue friendship with Jesus, we also begin to see that He is the one who has been pursuing us the whole time. Come and join us in the pursuit. Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to St. Anne. Those of you that have come here this evening for our Mass, we want to welcome you. And if this is your first time back, uh, we want to welcome you back. Um, and for those of you that are joining us on our live stream, we welcome you here. We are so excited that everyone could be here to celebrate this, this wonderful celebration. Uh, my name is Cooper Ray, and I'm the coordinator for middle school ministry uh, here at St. Anne. And um, I just have a few announcements as we begin our, our time here this evening. Uh, first of all, we are excited that we are able to do our 430 Mass again uh, starting up this weekend due to the, the overwhelming numbers that we've had coming in uh, each and every uh, time that we have been able to have our Mass uh, in person. So uh, due to that, due to the, due to the uh, response, we've been able to go ahead and offer that. And that begins tomorrow, uh, our 430 math Mass here. And it's more of a contemporary Mass. If you've never been before, contemporary music, uh, I think you'd enjoy it. If you've never been before, please join us. Also, as you came in tonight, if you were here, you'd notice that we have a hospitality team that uh, is here for you. They are here to welcome you, to make you feel safe, secure, and allow for you just to have a, a great experience here at St. Anne. Um, and, and we cannot have... The, the hospitality and the crew that we have, we can't have the experience um, without them being right there at the door as soon as you walk in. And so, uh, but at the same time, uh, we would like to open that opportunity up for those of you that would be willing to share in that responsibility. So if being on hospitality and standing at the doors and holding the doors and just being that first point of contact for people as they come in, if that's something that you feel like you'd like to do, we would love to welcome you to do that. And um, you can go to our website, St. Anne Parish forward slash hospitality and sign up if you would like to do that. Um, one program that we'd like to uh, to share with you that's coming up is called Explore Catholicism. Explore Catholicism is a monthly event for people curious about joining the Catholic Church. These events are an opportunity for us to meet you, hear your stories, answer questions, and answer the questions you have about the Catholic Church. At these meetings, we will also specifically outline the next steps for people interested in beginning a journey of full initiation into the Catholic Church. Those meetings that are coming up are going to be August 24th at 7 p.m. for the Spanish-speaking population and August 25th at 7 p.m. for the English-speaking population. Again, that's Explore Catholicism. And we'd love for you to stay connected. Uh, the best way for you to stay connected uh, throughout the week is on our website, saintanneparish.org, or we also have a Facebook page at facebook.com, Saint Anne Catholic Parish. 
So outside of this, we could gather, and um, like I said, our websites are our best way to, to get information for the things that we need and the things that you might need here as you join us. Uh, you'll find opportunities like our prayer wall, our Sabbath guide, and times for public masses, adorations, and confessions. You'll also find links to describe, subscribe to our newsletter, which is a great way to stay connected to everything new here at St. Anne and stay up to date on our reopening process. You'll also find a contact card, and this is a simple tool to let us know how we can best guide you in your next steps at St. Anne. You can find that at stannparish.org forward slash contact card. And again, we welcome you. We thank you for joining us. Now let's take a moment of silence to calm our hearts and prepare for Mass. Please stand. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Praise God's gracious mercy. Sing out your joy to the Lord. Shout the joy to the Lord, all the earth. Praise the name above all names. Say to God, how wondrous your works. How glorious your name. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Praise God's gracious mercy. Sing out our joy to the Lord, whose love is enduring. Let the earth worship singing your praise, praise the glory of your name. Come and see the deeds of the Lord, bless God's holy name. Lift up your hearts to the Lord, praise God's gracious mercy, sing out your joy to the Lord, whose love is enduring. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Our Mass this evening is offered for Lucy Coripe and Coripe Elengico. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We 
praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering voice. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. salvation Lord let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation Lord 
Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will listen to the voice of the Lord. His voice speaks peace to his people. His salvation is near to those who revere him. His glory shall dwell in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness grant us your salvation kindness and truth come together justice and peace shall embrace truth shall spring up from the earth and justice look down from above Lord let us see your kindness grant us your salvation Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give us his benefits. Our land shall yield the increase. Justice shall walk before him, preparing the way of the Lord. Lord, let us see your kindness. Grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness. And grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are the Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. is listening you have the words of everlasting life hallelujah 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 hallelujah
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come unto you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water towards Jesus. But when we saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. We are now in our third week of our series, The Pursuit, right in the middle of the series, where we consider how the pursuit of Jesus is the very heart of discipleship. In the first week, two weeks ago, if you can follow the timeline, we saw how the kingdom of God is something that cannot be attained without actually selling everything that we have. It's like this pearl of great price, this treasure buried in a field. And then last week we saw in the pursuit of all of these people from all of these towns out into a deserted place, going to find Jesus, how in entering into that, that vulnerability, in a way selling what they have, the things that give control and security for the sake of seeking Jesus, they were fed by this miraculous bread from heaven, this multiplication of the loaves which prefigures the Eucharist. And now today we have this gospel, which more powerfully than any other that I can think of right now, illustrates this pursuit of Christ. We have Peter with his impetuousness. But before Peter, we have Jesus walking by on the water and we have the reaction of the disciples, and it's one of great fear. They were terrified. Etarakthasen in Hebrew, they were stirred up like a stormy ocean. It's a verb that describes like water when it gets stirred up or agitated. And that's how the disciples felt. They were terrified. And to hear those words of Jesus passing by in the middle of the night, out in the middle of this huge lake, take courage. It is I, do not be afraid. What consolation to be able to hear those words straight from the mouth of God himself. And to hear actually that when he says, it is I, he does mean, hey, it's me. But it also has a deeper significance. Because again, in Greek, the word for it is I, the two words, it's ego e me. He's saying, I am. And that's the way in Greek very often in the Old Testament and in the New, God names himself. He is the great I am. Jesus is making a claim of divinity here. He's not just saying as he walks by, it's okay, it's me, don't worry. I'm walking on the water, but don't mind that, it's me. He says, I am. In that moment of recognition, Peter does this impetuous thing, which I honestly have struggled with all week. Like, why doesn't Peter say, Lord, if it is you, come into the boat? Why command that I come out to you on the water? It doesn't make sense. 
How is that really a proof of his divinity anyway? Like a ghost could have said, okay, come on out. Something just captures Peter's heart and maybe he's not thinking all the way, but the more I struggled with that, the more I started to realize that's actually a very natural reaction. When we have this recognition that God is present, we do the same thing when we have this recognition that we're falling in love with someone. We start to make these incredible promises. I'll do anything for you. You're the only one. We start to speak in real absolutes and do kind of things that don't always make sense. I had a recognition about God's presence in my life and his great love for me and his call for me all at once um, when I was just finishing my first year of university. It was tied up together with the priesthood. And in that moment, that it's truly God, the I am, who was with me all this time and I didn't realize it, who was seeking me out, who loved me with this personal love and was calling me to himself. Like when I had that moment of recognition, I made this crazy promise. Lord, whatever you want for me, I'll do it. Just call me to come to you. If you're calling me to be a priest, I have no idea what that actually means in real life. I'd never really considered it in a serious way. But Lord, if if it is you, call me to come out to you. It would have made more sense if I'd thought it through. Not that I regret the choice, right? That's why seminary is so long. You, You can get past that moment of impetuousness and actually consider these things. But just my point is that what we see here in the gospel is this recognition of Peter. When Jesus says, take courage, I am. Do not be afraid. Peter recognizes it and he responds with his whole self. Lord, if it is you, command that I come out to you on the water. Notice also that he doesn't run out onto the water just to go meet the Lord. There's something of a, you have to initiate this God, but I'm asking you to initiate it. And then Jesus says, come. I wonder if he said that with a smile, too. Like a little grin out there in the stormy waves. Like, all right, let's see what you got, Peter. Come on. It's going to be all right. It's such a powerful gospel to illustrate our journey of discipleship. And when you look at the last three weeks together, you see what the heart of discipleship is. It's this treasure buried in a field or this pearl of great price that in the parables we're told we have to sell everything. Friendship with Jesus requires us stepping out of our comfort zone away from the things which can easily become idols which seem to promise security. There's something about the stepping out towards him that increases our faith, that matures our love, and moves us further further closer, (laughs) moves us closer to him um, as he prepares us for the way of the cross to join with him in his walk towards Jerusalem. That's where the whole gospel's leading up. And so as we see the disciples' faith maturing and maturing in this impetuous, this good movement of Peter, but maybe not all the way thought through, you can see his faith mature. He actually got pretty far, even though he's of little faith. So imagine how much the Lord can do with us as we continue to grow in faith. We're constantly beset by obstacles in this pursuit of Christ. Just as Peter was distracted and then stricken with fear once he recognized the waves, once he took his eyes off Christ, we have so many things swirling around us that would seek to do the same today. Whether they're neutral things or bad things, there's just so much going on that can pull us away, pull our gaze away from Christ. And so it's so important that we're able to take moments of prayer 
to pray with the scriptures, and to even pray in such a way as to engage our imagination, to place ourselves in that, in the place of Peter, walking on the water with him, hearing the Lord call to us, come. And that's our practice for the week. It's called Ignatian contemplation, if you've ever heard of that term before. It's also just called imaginative prayer, where you sit with the scriptures and you ruminate over the scene, but you try and engage your imagination and ask the Lord to work through your imagination to help you see yourself in that scene and hear him calling to you, to feel the spray of the waves. And then when you feel that fear, seeing the wind and the waves all around you, to recognize what that actually is in your life right now that would seek to take your gaze away from him. If the pursuit of Jesus is really the heart of discipleship, as his parables two weeks ago would seem to to claim, if it really takes everything that we have, we should also recognize that it's something we can, only, we can only give up step by step. That if, even if you were going to look at all your possessions right now and we're going to say, okay, I will literally sell everything I have, you have to do that somewhat piecemeal. You make the resolution wholesale, like Peter jumps out onto the water, but you have to keep acting and keep walking through that. It's not something that can happen all at once. And that's the same thing with this this pathway of faith that we have to walk on. It takes continual steps, continual resolutions and recommitment to that resolution to seek Jesus with all our hearts, confident that even if we get distracted and begin to sink, he will reach out with strong hand and outstretched arm and save us. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Aware of God's quiet presence at work in our lives, we place our needs before him. May God continue to bless him with good health and vitality. We pray to the Lord. For elected officials, may God graciously watch over them in their service to their people. We pray to the Lord. For those who suffer from natural disasters, hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, And for all those who bring them assistance and relief, we pray to the Lord. For those who perished and those injured in the deadly blast in Beirut, Lebanon, this past week, that God will give them courage, ease their pain, and touch the hearts of many to assist them, we pray to the Lord. For our diocese, 
that we may be blessed with an increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life. We pray to the Lord. For the grace to respond to Jesus' invitation to, to step out in faith despite the winds and waves around us, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and all those who care for them, may God's grace bring them healing and strength, especially those whose names are on the prayer chain, on the prayer wall, and also for Randy Riley, or Melinda Perez, Emmanuel Castilian, San Diego Flores, Gen X Sancrino, Lauren Brasson, Leigh Hurley, Narissa Sekantanico, and Gary Austin, Gray Austin, we pray to the Lord. For the faithful party, especially for Melinda Lane, Diego Rojas, Louis Elinges Pentel, George Gall, and Danny Owens, may they be welcomed into the eternal life God gives to his son, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayers as we seek to be the hands and feet of Jesus each day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And as we prepare for the offertory, um, y'all have probably noticed that there are baskets at the exits. We're not passing the baskets right now, but if you could place your offering in the baskets, and for all those who are, I, I mean, on your way out, and for all those who are watching on the live stream, I would encourage you to go to stannparish.org slash give and to make an electronic donation. Thank you. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Oh, Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are Bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. <laughs> lift up your hearts. We lift them up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right <laughs> and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead. We hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and Edward our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
come forward to receive communion, we do invite you to and ask you to please uh, receive communion in your hands.
take me deeper than my feet could ever wander and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine I am yours You are mine I am yours You are mine I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine I am yours are mine. I am yours, and you Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just one quick announcement before we go. In order to ensure a I guess a spaced exit. I'd encourage everybody to stay in your pew and to make a prayer of thanksgiving until the hospitality um, ministers come and dismiss you pew by pew. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless 
Blessed be your God.